What is up everyone? In this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about pointers in Golang. Because a lot of people are coming from other languages like JavaScript or Python, and which do not have the concept of pointers and coming into Go and interacting with pointers can be very overwhelming or confusing. But before we continue, you know this stuff. If you like the content I am providing to you, please consider subscribing to my channel. Give me a thumbs up, leave some questions in the comments, jump into the Discord, Let's go. So pointers, uh, we can make this topic as complex as we want. The only thing you need to know is that a pointer is an eight byte long integer pointing to a specific slot in memory. That's the only thing you need to know. For the wise guys uh, watching this video, if you have a 32 bit machine, a pointer is four bytes long. If you have a 64 machine, 64 bit machine, a pointer is eight bytes long. But hey, we are 2022, so who is using uh, a 32 bit machine? Hey. All right, so we're gonna make this uh, like I always do. Instead of making things complicated, I have basically uh, won the Nobel Prize for simpl simplification. So we're gonna make a simple game. So we're gonna say type um, a player, right? A game without a player is nothing. It's gonna be a structure. We're gonna have health and uh, it's gonna be an integer, right? Then we're gonna make some kind of an action game or something, and we're gonna say um, funk take damage uh, from I don't know explosion or something like this, and we're gonna say a player. We're gonna put a player into this function just like that, and we're gonna say here fmt println um, player man player is taking damage. Uh, from explosion. Man, what's going on here? Explosion. Still, need, I'm, I just woke up, man. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Need to warm up. So, players taking damage from explosion. Uh, what we're going to say, for example, is that the damage we're going to give this guy uh, is 10 explosion damage, right? 10 hit points. And then we're going to say player health uh, minus equals the damage we give it, right? That's that's what we're going to do. Actually, let's, let's call this explosion uh, DMG to make it more clear. Uh, explosion DMG, right, cool. That's a function, take damage from explosion. It could be it trapped into a landmine or uh, somebody uh, it, it takes some splash damage from a rocket launcher or something. Hey, be creative, I have no clue. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a player here. We're gonna say a player is gonna be a player, a structure, right? And we're gonna say health, this is classic Golang structure in uh, initialization. Uh, health, what I'm gonna say, 100, right? It's quick math, it's easy for calculations. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to say uh, take damage from explosion. We're going to pass in the player, just like that. And let's print out uh, the player here, FMT print F uh, before explosion, which is going to be percentage plus V, new line, pass in the player, copy this stuff, paste it below, fixing some typos. And here we're going to say after explosion, just like that. And then we're going to say go run may not go and we're gonna give some some explosion to our player boom and we can see unfortunately uh, before the explosion the health is 100 we do the explosion but after the explosion the health is still 100 how does it how how the why well very simple because you need to know that this is just a player and each time we call a function what is happening is that this guy is going to get copied Right? It's going to be a copy into this function. Copy. So basically, what happening? What is happening here is that we are modifying the state of a copy. And after the function is done, right? Here, here, here the function returns. The function is 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 done. So basically, it's cleaning up the stack, and uh, everything is gone. So nothing happens. How can you solve that? Well. You can solve that by just basically returning a player here, right? The functional approach without any state. You take in a player, you spit out a player, and uh, it's all good. The problem is, uh, it's it's nasty, right? In a functional language, uh, it's a common it's a common practice. But Golang has state, has a concept of, of state, and also Golang has a concept of pointers. So. How can we fix that is instead of saying that this is going that this player here is going to be a copy, we can say no, I don't want a copy. I want a pointer to a player, which basically means 
You will pass in, instead of the player structure, you will pass in the 8 byte long integer that points to the location in memory where this player structure houses. So you can directly, quote, quote, right? Take it with a grain of salt. Directly modify in memory the state of the player. So everybody that has the pointer to the player, the 8-byte integer pointer that points to that memory, can read also directly from memory, which basically means that everybody will be updated, right? I'm, I'm, I'm making it simple. I'm trying to simplify, right? So we are telling here that we need a pointer to a player. That basically means that if we want to take, uh, if you want to place a pointer to a player, we cannot put that struct in. We need to tell the compiler that we want with this uh, n percent or whatever uh, this is called, uh, we'll basically tell the compiler that we want a reference to a player, a reference to memory of that player structure. You could pass it in like this, but you could also say that you, you could also initialize your player directly as a pointer, as a reference. It's the same thing, right? Let's do it like this. So this player thing is going to be an 8 byte long integer. Integer pointer, right? If we delete this thing, boom. If we delete this, this is not longer the case. It's just going to be the player structure that will be copied. All right? Cool. Um, yes. So if we run this function again, boom. You can see that uh, now we are updated, right? Now we have the correct health because we are directly modifying the player state into memory. Quote, quote. Cool. Very powerful, right? But why is it very powerful? Because it's one of the, there are, I, in my opinion, there are two benefits of using pointers. And this is the first benefit because you can imagine that we have, uh, in a game, we have a UI and we will have, I don't know, maybe we will have um, something else in the game and all these, these entities, they, they have this player pointer. And for example, the UI will display the player's health somewhere in the UI and um, it will have this pointer to that player. So each time it basically displays, calling display, display player health, it basically reads from that pointer and will always have the correct health. And everybody that holds that pointer in our game will have the correct health displayed or will have the cor correct, can read the correct health of the player at that certain point of time. So that's a big power. And I always say that with big power comes great responsibility because although it seems like a very nice thing to have, pointers can also shoot you in the foot because um, if everybody is just updating this pointer everywhere in the game, it can lead to data inconsistency, especially if you're running this in, in a multi-threaded environment or in a multi-go routine environment where you have all these go routines running, having this pointer to this player and you can update all that stuff everywhere and you will have race conditions. And something that can also happen to you is that this player uh, will, will not have the pointer. It will have the pointer to the player, but the memory will be empty. And that's what is called a nil pointer. Right, and uh, the most issue you will have, I will, I will show you, is for example, uh, take damage from explosion. Let's say player, let's do something nasty, right? You're gonna say player is nil. Let's say um, somewhere, somewhere in your game, you deleted, for example, um, the player. Just making something upright on the fly. So you set the player nil because you delete it, but somebody is still holding a reference. You, your UI, for example. You delete the player somewhere, you kill the player. Huh? You have a function, kill player, he's died. Headshot, boom, he's, this guy is out of here. He's, you smoked him. But the UI still holds that player, for example. Then what is going to happen, if you run this, you see? Invalid memory address or no pointer dereference. That's what you guys are going to have a lot of the time. And you will be so confused what the hell is going on. And you will be crying. 
and wiping your tears and you will go back to your other language uh, because you have no clue what's going on. Well, it's very simple because the only thing that this, this, this nil pointer dereference is telling you is that the pointer that points, this player, this 8-byte integer, points to a certain location in memory, the same, the same spot where the player lived before, but the player is gone. So it points to nothing or to garbage, not the player anymore, right? So you're dereferencing, and dereferencing means I got the 8-byte integer. Then Golang will automatically dereference this to the player struct, but he cannot dereference it because the player struct is not there, right? Because in C or something, uh, or C++, you have this, the concept of dereferencing like this, right? player health. That's a dereference. And Golang will automatically do this if you call player health, right? Because it will automatically find this player, but this, this is the pointer, the 8-byte integer. It will automatically find this in memory. It will dereference it so you have the structure. You have this guy. But this guy doesn't exist because it's nil. Boom. And you have a panic. That's what happened. So if you have this error, always 100% sure that the thing you want to access is no longer existing anymore. So it's deleted. So that's what it is. Right? So let's uh, not do this anymore. All right. So a lot of another thing I want to... Um, another. Uh, let's first do another example for this. That can be confusing. And then I'm going to say the second... Uh, I'm going to give you some hints and tips when to use and when not to use. Right? So we have this take damage from explosion and we have this player thing. Right, so let's rewrite this function the exact same way but different, and this is basically tricky, right? So what you also could do uh, is do something like a func player, right? Let's, to be honest, uh, what I'm gonna do? Yeah, I'm gonna first make it make it wrong. We're gonna say func player. Let's join this. Take damage from explosion, and instead of saying uh, in putting in the player, we don't need to because we have access to the player here. Right? We're gonna attach this function to the structure. It's not a method; it's a function. Uh, and we're gonna say damage int, and then we're gonna do actually exactly the same thing. We're gonna copy the shenanigans, paste it in here. The explosion damage is not is gonna be the damage we basically gave it here, and our function as an argument, right? So. I'm going to rewrite this function real quick. Uh, I hope I don't make it too complex. My bad. Damage. Int. Right. So we have these two functions here, right? And they are exactly the same. There is no difference, but legit, not a single difference in this function. Because... By doing this, is the same way as this. This is syntactic sugar for this. Because a lot of people are confused when they see something like this, right? They, they think if I have this funk player player take damage from explosion, that if they modify this guy here, that it will automatically reflect. And what I mean by that is uh, let's do player. Take damage from explosion. And we're going to say one, uh, 50 or something, right? We're going to halve his health, right? If I run this, you can see. After explosion, health stays the same. Even though we call this take damage from explosion directly on the player. And that confuses so many people because they think, hey, what's going on? It's not updating. Help me. Well, it comes because this player... And that's, I, I think it's a little bit wrong and Golang is so confusing... Although this uh, take damage from explosion is being attached to this player struct, it's exactly the same function as here. And remember what I told you in the beginning is that we have, we're copying the player. The same thing as here. We just have a copy of our player here. So enable to fix it, the only thing we need to do is say that this is going to be a pointer to a player. It's going to be this 8-byte long integer pointing to memory where this player is housing, where he's sleeping, where he eats his food until he's getting deleted, right? So, 
we have this pointer here. We have the player here. We, men we mentioned that this is a pointer, so we can directly modify his memory. Quote, quote, right? Don't take this too serious because I need to do these quote quotes because on my videos there are always funny smarty pants that cannot resist to comment uh, the truth, but I'm trying to make it simple. So that's why I'm doing this quote quote. Take these things uh, from a very theoretical standpoint, not too serious. Right? There's a big difference between theoretical coding and practical coding, right? That's the difference between making 80K or 160K or 170 or 200K, right? Don't be too nitpicky. Uh, the real world behaves completely different, right? Uh, so we have this player thingy. Uh, we're going to say go and may not go, right? And now we can see that the health is being subtracted because we are modifying a pointer to a player, right? I hope this clears a, a lot of things because I think it's important, especially uh, this syntactic sugar, which is not a method, it's a function. The same thing as here. Let's make it the exact same thing by just saying a player pointer. So these two functions are basically the exact same thing. There's no difference, not at all. Syntactic sugar. Cool. So when to use a pointer? Now, when not to use a pointer? Well, there are two reasons when you use a pointer. If you need to do a lot of state updates, like in this case, right, we have a UI that needs a player and we need to update it. Uh, you want to directly modify memory in your application without the need of um, copying that all over the place and, and doing these dependen dependency injections, you can use a pointer. But that's a big, big, big power and it's also a big responsibility, like I mentioned before. If everybody has this reference, it could be that somebody is deleting this guy and you still have a reference and you're, you, you want to display it, but the player is nil and then you're going to have nil pointer dereferences. So watch out with that. The second thing why you should use pointers is basically, let's say I have this function. I'm going to do it at the top. Func um, process big data for example right and it's going to be let's say type big data structure uh 20 gigabytes no <laughs> it's going to be too much let's say this is holding uh, let's say 500 megabytes right it's holding 500 megabytes it's not a file it's just basically i don't know maybe it's an order book in an exchange where you have this massive amount of order sitting in memory on your structure right and you want to process big data, which is going to be big, uh, let's say DBD, it's going to be big data, right? I'm going to process this boy, girl, thing. So what happens if each time you call this process big data, what's going to happen is it's going to copy this big data, which basically means it's going to copy 500 megabytes all the time. And let's say you call this, uh, I don't know, maybe you call it a a couple 10,000 times in a loop or something. So what's gonna happen is that you're gonna copy this 500 megabytes e each these 10,000 times in the loop. Copy, 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 copy. You see, it's very, very compu computational intensive, right? You don't, you don't wanna copy 500 megabytes uh, each time in your function. So how can we solve that? Well, we can make it a pointer. So instead of copying this 500 megabytes, what it's gonna do, the only thing it's gonna copy is eight bytes, right? Because a pointer is uh, that's what a pointer is. Pointer, uh, like this, for the smarty pants, only on 64-bit machines. Hey, okay? So that's why you could also use a pointer. Instead of copying your structure, which is basically a big pile of data, which holds a big pile of data, you're only going to copy the pointer pointing to where the big data is. But it's only 8 bytes, right? That's also a very common use case to use pointers so when to use them i use them a lot and i maybe overuse them uh, but the rule of thumb is never use them <laughs> it is what it is never use them unless unless you are doing something like this this process big data so you don't because this is for a performance uh from a perspective per performance standpoint, performance perspective, you need to use a pointer here because you will only copy eight bytes instead of the whole shebang. And if you, of course, in games and such where you have all this, this state, um, it's also a common practice to use pointers so you can update it uh, directly into memory. But you need to be very careful, right? Because you're going to shoot yourself in the foot a lot of times with pointers. So the rule of thumb is try to avoid them 
unless you need them. And I know it's, it's, it's cliche, but this will come with experience. Right? So try to avoid them unless you need them or unless you are doing uh, computational stuff with some data types, data structures that holds a lot of data and you don't want to copy that into these functions, right? So that's basically, I hope, a very clear information, a very good use case, a very uh, informational video about pointers. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave some questions in the comments. And if you have more questions about this, if you want to discuss uh, these things more in depth, join to the Discord where you can print out all your, your questions and I am happy to answer them. Thanks for watching this video and I'm looking forward to see you in one of my live streams or future videos. Peace out.